Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you all for class 7, subject science. Topic is nutrition in plants. This is the continuous topic of part 1. There we had learned about autotropic nutrition and heterotropic nutrition. Autotropic nutrition means preparing of their own food is known as autotropes. All green plants are known as autotropes. Some other plants are there which are not heterotrophs, that is which are not autotropes, they are heterotropes. Why it is said heterotropes? There are different modes of nutrition in plants. Now what are the different uh, modes of nutrition in plants you are going to learn here. Why we say that they are heterotropic mode of nutrition? Because they depend on others for their nutrition. That is the meaning of heterotrope. Now, what is this? This is a parasitic plant. You know the cascuta plant that is nothing but amarbale. On the trees, there are other climbers which will be hanging on them. That is nothing but the amarbale or the cascuta plant. This, in these plants, they don't have chlorophyll to make their own food. Actually, what lacking is? Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is not present in this plant. Therefore, they take the nutrition from the other plant. Here, the host, host plant means the plant which is preparing its own food. The other plants depend on this. For example, cascuta plant depend on other plant for their food. That is known as parasitic plants. The plants which depend on other plant for their nutrition is known as parasitic plants. Example, cascuta or amarbale. Now, coming to the next. What is the next? Next is insectivorous plants. As the name suggests, the plants depend on insects for their nutrition. Example, pitcher plant. You can see the plant. This is the modification of leaf. This is the modification of leaf of the plant. This type of leaf you can see in pitcher plant. What happens here is the insect will stick to this lid. As the insect it is going to stick on this lid, the lid is going to be closed. And that insect is stuck here. Then all the nutrition what, the, what that insect had that they will use to used to leave there. This is the leaf modified of pitcher plant. Modified leaf of a pitcher plant. The insect sit anywhere here. Suddenly the lid closes and the insect is stuck inside this pitcher. It is looking like pitcher here. So from that organism the plant uses the nutrients. That kind of plants are known as insectivorous plants. The nutrition actually getting from insects. It is known as insectivorous plants. Coming to the next. Next is sapo, saprotrophic plants. This means that is the dead and decay things which are there in the surroundings. From that their mushrooms are grown. So mushroom nutrients are nothing but from the dead and decay plants. The plants which grow with dead and decay plants as a nutrition, that type of plants are known as saprotrophic plants and the plants are known as saprotrophs, example mushrooms. So mushrooms will grow wherever the dead and decay of other plants and animals are found. That is saprotrophic plants. Coming to the next topic that is symbiosis. Symbiosis is nothing but like partners. Like partners it is. One will be depending on the other. Some organism live together, share both shelter and nutrients. This relation is called symbiosis. Example, certain fungi live inside the roots of plants. The plants provide nutrient to the fungus and in return the fungus provides water and certain nutrients. 
For example, in organisms called lichens, a chlorophyll containing partner which is an alga and a fungus live together. The fungus provides shelter and the water and minerals to the alga and in return the alga prepares and provides food to the fungus. This is what known as symbiosis means partnership. One is preparing even the other is helping to it. It is known as symbiosis. Not only this, coming to the next now. You have learned that plants absorb minerals and nutrients from the soil. Fertilizers and manures contain nutrients such as nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, etc. These nutrients need to be added from time to time to enrich the soil. We can grow plants and keep them healthy. From the soil only the plant grows. Now plants what they need? They need the nutrients. The nutrients are absorbed from the soil. The soil contains what type of nutrients? That is nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus. Once it is grown it will be the phosphorus quantity or the nutrients will become less in the soil. Therefore, frequently it should be added. Therefore, what the farmer use? The farmer uses manure to what? To fertilize the soil. Plants cannot use it in the manure. They can use carbon dioxide. They need nitrogen in the soluble form. Hence, addition of fertilizer and manure enriches the soil. The bacterium called rhizobium. The bacterium called rhizobium can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a usable form. But rhizobium cannot make its own food. It is again coming to the type of symbiosis. Okay. Here we who, which are the partners? The soil and the rhizobium. Rhizobium is a microscopic organism which we cannot see. So it cannot prepare its own food. But it is turning the atmospheric nitrogen into the soluble form. Helping the farmers to grow. So it often leaves in the roots. Who is Now rhizobium often leaves in the roots of the grams, peas, moong, beans and other legumes. Legumes are nothing but the pulses what we eat and provides them nitrogen. In return, the plants provide food and shelter to the bacteria. Thus, have a symbiotic relationship. That is what you have learned now. All the pulses and are legumes. Those are leguminous plants. These are the different mode of nutrition what you have learned. All the animals and human beings are heterotrophs. In autotrophs only the green plants are autotrophs which prepare their own food. The remaining have different mode of nutrition. What are the different mode of nutrition here? Those are parasitic plants, insectivorous plants, saprophytic plants and leguminous plants. This is, this completes the chapter of nutrition in plants. Thank you.